Hey everyone, welcome to Physics at Home. Today what we're going to do is we're going to replicate the pendulum rod that I normally would do in class. Now obviously at home we don't have all the tools we'd normally use that would be able to give us some accuracy. You may at your house have some kind of ruler, measuring tape, something like that to be able to run it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend you left everything at home in your locker and you've got nothing. And you have to basically find stuff around your house to replicate this lab. Normally what we do is we use the pendulum lab and we start talking about things like harmonic motion or waves. With the pendulum lab, essentially what we're trying to do is get used to a couple of key terms. Things like cycle, your uh, frequency, that kind of stuff. And we can still do that here. So what you'll notice is I found a spot that's kind of clear. I'm in my closet right now because that gives me an unobstructed way to be able to build a pendulum. So a pendulum it has a simple arm, so in this case I've got some spring, and then there's a mass hanging on the end of my pendulum swing, and then if I let it go, it will obviously oscillate or move back and forth in a uniform manner. So when it comes to building your pendulum, you can hang this from any site in your house that works, as long as it's free and clear and won't run into anything. I did think about using my staircase, but because of all the banisters, I figured I would be a little safer and away from debris and things in a closet. Other things you can do if you wanted to hang, so I have was able to find some string. I was also thinking if you have some yarn, maybe some thread or something in your house, you can use those. If you're really stuck, check out your closet because you probably have some ribbons or something like that that you may be using for a dress. Or if we're really, really stuck, maybe you have like a house coat and you can use the arm or the band out of your house coat as well. Regardless, if you can just tie something and have it hanging, obviously if we can reduce friction, so in this case we can reduce friction a little bit, then that would be a little bit better. Okay, so for this lab, essentially what you're going to do is you're going to want to have a string or something hanging, and then at the bottom you're going to tie on some kind of mass. So your mass can be pretty much anything around your house. So for example, like I have this Rubik's cube, I have small children, so I was able to find small toys. So you want to find a couple different things with different masses. You can even use like a ball, ball of socks. So essentially you want to find a couple different masses that have some variability. So one you could classify as heavy, one you could classify as light. You can even have one in the middle, okay, so the heaviest, midweight, and lightest. In terms of finding stuff, you could, for example, swing a pencil, but because it's really long, you'll end up with actually a bunch of turning action and some wobble, and you may not get good results. So if you can find something that has its mass kind of condensed into a center, uniform shape, whether it's a cube or a sphere, I think you'll be a little better off. Even going with a short, fat cylinder would be better than a long, skinny cylinder. So once you've got your couple of masses, as you can see in the handout that's attached here, you're going to basically start varying a couple of different parameters. So obviously I can do a couple different things. One, I can change the mass hanging on my pendulum. So I can change this orange to something that's lighter or something that's heavier. Two, I can change how far away I am from dropping it. The nice thing about the closet is that it provides me a wall. So I always can start it from the same point and then I could start it from a little bit less from that point and then let it go. The third thing we can change is just how long our pendulum is. So right now I have it kind of at its maximum length without it running into the table, and then I could then shorten that up. So maybe tie it so that my pendulum is hanging from here, and then even make it shorter. Be careful with your shortest one that your length is able to get that full swing in, otherwise uh, it will be too short and then your results won't be as good. So essentially what you're gonna do, build the pendulum. And we're going to modify a couple of things. Obviously, it's not going to be as accurate as what you would see in the classroom. However, we can still make predictions or hypotheses based off of what happens if I change the mass hanging on my pendulum. How does that affect my cycles? Or how does it affect the time it takes to complete a cycle? If I change the length of this, how does that impact my time? And this is going to allow us to start investigating a couple of things, things like period and frequency and the relationship between the two of them. To do this lab, it's pretty simple. All you need to do is drop it from a consistent place. So for me, it's going to be in front of the wall. And then what you're going to do is you're going to time how long it completes a cycle. My recommendation to you, a lot of people would automatically just assume the time it takes to do one cycle. The problem is, is that that's about a second. And our reaction time typically is somewhere in the 0.1 to 0.3 second range. So the more time we have, the less that reaction time is going to come into play. So to take your time, you can use a clock, a stopwatch, your cell phone, whatever you need. And essentially, you can even do Mississippi's if you needed to. So you're going to pull it back from the wall, and you're going to let it swing. And you're going to count how many cycles they are and time how long it takes to do those cycles. My recommendation is to wait how long it takes to do 10 cycles. So for example, 
If I was going to count from Mississippi, it's actually a little hard to do because i got to count cycles as well. But what you would essentially do is you would hold it here. Try not to drop it or add any energy to it. Just let it go. So you would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stop your time. Then you'd record that. So that's the time it took me to complete 10 cycles. Remember, one cycle is from its peak all the way to the other side and all the way return back to where you were. If I was to graph my position versus time right now, this would actually look a lot like a cosine graph because I'm at my maximum. This is my midline, so this would be my zero or my x-axis. Then I'd be at my minimum to my zero x-axis and then back to my maximum again. If you were going from the center line and maxing position, then you'd be something similar to your sine curve. And remember that this maximum position I am away from that midline, that's going to give my amplitude of my wave when I'm graphing this. So I've got my time for 10 cycles. Now I'm going to take my orange off and I'm going to change it out for a different mass, or maybe I'm going to change the length and just work through the various parameters. And then essentially you're going to be able to make up some, I guess, ideas or get some better concrete ideas about what impacts the frequency of a pendulum. Is it mass? Is it length? Or is it drop height? And I uh, encourage you to explore that at home and have some fun doing physics at home. Have a good day.